Hey everyone, got kind of a crazy idea for a topic today. I'm not really sure that I'm even qualified to be talking about this. Um, but I watch uh, quite a few different moto vlogs on the YouTube. Uh, not really a ton, but I do keep searching for different stuff. I just kind of enjoy it. I enjoy people who talk about bikes, and uh, but also just people who kind of spew nonsense while they're riding a bike. And it's just interesting to me. Um, one of the things I've seen that it kind of chafes me because, you know, every once in a while I watch some motorcycle skills stuff just because it's something that I feel like you can always be improving on. Everyone can always be improving on it. One of my things is just confidence with what my tires are doing while I'm riding, especially in a corner, especially hard cornering, especially when the weather's bad or the road surface is weird and all that kind of stuff. So I'm always working on getting more confidence and, and just feeling like I've got the bike well planted and it's going to do what I tell it to do. This invariably involves a lot of checking out videos about steering. And it occurs to me that there are a lot of riders who are good and capable and expert on the bike and they can make the bike do what they want to, but they don't explain correctly what counter steering actually is and why it works. And it's something coming from quite a bit with bicycles and all the steering principles are essentially the same because motorcycles really did just develop they evolved from bicycles with first with small motors on them and then bigger motors and then they eventually became their own thing but the way that it travels over the ground is still exactly the same. It's really the weight and the power source that are different. And so one thing that gets misrepresented a lot though is counter steering and, and why and how it works. I've heard people break it down as simply as, well, once the motorcycle gets going more than 20 miles an hour, the steering just starts working opposite. No, it doesn't. <laughs> The steering, the way the motorcycle steers is always the same. There's a certain component of wheel turn, there's a certain component of lean. It's balancing yourself over the bike and the bike is partly self-stabilizing because of the weight of the wheels and the centrifugal force that uh, makes the wheels want to stay on their own plane. The reason for counter steering is what you're actually doing when you push on the right grip to make the bike go right. I'm gonna exaggerate the motions here for a minute to, uh, to show what this is. But as I, as I push on the right grip, if you watch what happens, the very first thing that the bike does, if you, if you pay attention carefully, when I push on the right grip, the first thing the bike does is the nose actually does go left. What counter steering actually is, is a way of destabilizing the bike using its own momentum and the grip of the front tire. So what you're actually doing is, if you're trying to go right and you push right on the grip, you're making the bike try to steer left but it's perfectly upright. And if you understand how G-forces work in a turn, as the bike is trying to turn left, the momentum of the bike wants it to keep going forward. And the result between those two forces is the bike wants to tip over to the right because the tires are gripping and the top where the weight is unsettles 
and it makes the bike actually fall over to the right. So when you give it that light push, you're using the steering to do something that your own weight on top of the bike actually has a hard time doing. If I, if I lean, if I just lean to the right, the bike comes over very slowly. If I push on the right grip, it rolls over quick. So you're using your, the handlebar and the steering to forcefully destabilize and unbalance the bike and make it tip in the direction that you want to be steering. It's actually a really cool principle when you stop and think about it because of, of what it makes possible with the handling of a motorcycle. Now, the other thing about steering that I think is probably misunderstood is how it actually works. When the motorcycle, when you, when you push on the grip, and the bike tips, you'll notice that as it leans over, you feel it fall into place, and then you actually feel the bar tip back in the direction that you're steering. If, you're, if, you, have, if you keep a, a light grip on things, and you just sort of pay attention to the sensations coming through your hands and what the bike is doing, You'll notice that you you push, it tips, and then the handlebar turns back into the direction that you're turning, and and that sort of perpetuates the push a little harder, and it starts the whole cycle over again, making you lean harder and harder and harder. The reason why that all works is because of the steering geometry, and this is this is kind of black art. It's difficult to get the steering geometry just right because it's a combination of many things. It's first and foremost the, the thing that we can all see is what they call the rake on the fork. And I come from bicycles, we actually use different terms, uh, so I'm going to try and stick to the motorcycle terms for uh, steering geometry and principles. Well, if I mess up, I'll try and correct myself and keep it not too confusing. But the rake is the angle at which the fork is pointing forward. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is the offset. If you look at the triple clamp on your fork, it's the easiest way to see it. The steering head, the bearing that the fork actually turns on, the part of the frame, is slightly behind where the fork legs clamp into the triple clamps. That's called your offset. Then the combination of your offset and your rake give you another dimension that's called trail. Trail is kind of the trickiest one to get your head around. Trail is, if you imagine a straight line drawn through the steering head, so the bearing in the frame, if you imagine a straight line drawn through that, going down to the ground, the point at which that contacts the ground, then you take a horizontal line from there and you draw it straight back to the middle of the contact patch of the tire. You might have to draw this out or, or just kind of look at the front of your bike from the side to see what this actually is, but you end up with the we the tire's contact patch is actually slightly behind that imaginary line coming down from the steering head. And that's called trail or caster. Caster being taken from, well, you know, the wheels on the front of a shopping cart. If you look at that, that's the simplest form of caster. The bearing is actually vertical, so the, the line you draw through the bearing where it pivots is actually straight up and down, and the wheel, when you're moving forward, the wheel actually trails behind. So the friction in the bearing and the friction of the wheel on the ground make it like a weather vane. It, it 
just trails behind what the uh, the natural center of the pivot point is on the shopping cart wheel. So you'd immediately, you'd look at a motorcycle fork and you'd say this can't work because the caster is actually backwards because the fork legs are pushed in front of the steering bearing. So why does this work? Well, that's where the relationship between the rake and trail come in. So the rake gives it an imaginary pivot center that's in front of the wheel like it needs to be. That does one other crazy thing and this again is a major part of why motorcycle steering works as well as it does, why it feels so natural. Because your tire has width and because it has caster in your fork geometry and because you're leaning the bike over the combination between all that stuff going on in the front and the wheelbase, the, the distance between the wheels, means that when the bike leans over, the weight of the bike pushing down makes the front wheel turn harder because the center of rotation of the axle is behind the point on the ground that the steering head is pointing at. So when you lean it over, that's why the front, the handlebar pulls back toward you a little bit on the grip that you just pushed to make it steer. And that's, that's really where the magic happens. That's the bike settling into its ideal total geometry to make the steering happen. And that's something that Motorcycle designers spend years and years and years perfecting this stuff for every model. Every single model of bike is different because the the weight of it's different, the center of gravity is different, the wheelbase is different, the tire size is different. And so it's a really, really difficult thing to get absolutely perfect. So next time you get on a motorcycle and you just and you realize that you're not thinking about the steering because it feels so natural, that's because the guy that designed that motorcycle frame really knew his stuff and just came up with the perfect combination of geometry to make your bike handle just the way that it needs to. It's really kind of an awesome thing. That's also why motorcycle manufacturers are so reluctant to recommend alternate tire sizes for their bikes because the the diameter of the wheel especially the front wheel if you think about it and even the width of it to a point is going to change the relationship that trail measurement if you put a bigger wheel on the same fork on the front end of the bike even if you raise the rear suspension to match it or put a bigger rear wheel on to match it, that trail measurement is going to change. If you put a bigger wheel on, the trail measurement gets longer. If you put a smaller wheel on, the trail measurement gets shorter. Longer trail, generally more stable. Shorter trail, generally quicker handling. If you do it right, you can possibly improve the motorcycle's handling for one purpose or another. If you do it wrong, the motorcycle is just going to steer like shit. So think carefully before changing tire sizes. It, uh, it has a much more dramatic effect on how well your bike steers than you would initially think. Alright, well that was a pretty serious conversation about steering. I'm going to cut it off there. Throw me a comment if you have anything to say. We'll talk to you later.